Right, so today we're going to do a plate on this Worcester CDI. Power off, as you can see. And then we go underneath, and then we're going to isolate the cold mains. And then we're going to do the flow and returns as well. You can see a bit stiff, they haven't been done for a while. Right, once the case is off, then we're going to uh, drain down the boiler. So put a hose on into my bucket and then uh, open up the, uh, the drain valve. Once that's done, then we can start looking at adding some, uh, getting some air into the, into the boiler to try and drain out whatever's left. I always uh, remove the, uh, the actual motor from the diverter valve. It actually just helps it drain all the excess boiler out as well, uh, excess water out as well. You could, you could pump up the expansion vessel as well. Probably should as a matter of course, really. Right, next up, what I tend to do is I will open up, uh, well, get onto these screws on the actual plate and I'll crack them open just a little bit, just to allow a little bit of water to get in, uh, a little bit of air to get in there and that'll drain out everything else. And then what I then do is I undo the hot outlet pipe um, and that will allow uh, me to get any to get the plate out through that gap there always got towels on the floor as well to allow for any water that's going to come out and then as you can see i'm getting my hand up the back then uh, and then wiggle it down needed two hours just to get it down but as you can see it does fit out and that's a 20 plate um, heat exchanger as well uh, very very blocked um, yeah and that's that one done as you can see by my finger very very dirty inside that boiler and then, um, so I cleared any blockage air out with my fingers and stuff like that, any, any filings that I could feel. Then we want to get the pack out. And uh, as you can see, it's got lots of other fiber washers in there and clips and stuff like that. Um, that's if you have to remove the whole hydro block or get out the pump or whatever. I don't do it that way, as you can see. So then we get our grease, grease up the uh, all, all your washers, make sure they're nicely greased up so then they, they, they become watertight. Same again on the others keep going through there and then once they're done then we can get up start putting in a new plate um just don't do what i've done I and mean, i put it in i think i put it in upside down because it wouldn't quite fit in so i had to remove it back out again and go again um which was obviously highly annoying but it's one of them things yep so as you can see now i've got it back in again start doing up the screws again and then um that should do that. Next up now we can start giving some uh, some mains water into it. As you'll be able to see, I didn't do up one thing. Can you guess what I did wrong? I thought it was the plate, but it wasn't. I had water flying out. What a donut. I didn't actually see that myself. I thought it was the actual plate, but it wasn't. It was just the actual, uh, I didn't do up the hot outlet pipe. What a donut. Round two. Once I've done that and tightened it back up again, then we can go for round two. Get that water back on again. So now I know. And you can see no more leaks. Now. So we're all, we're all good there. And then next up, then we can start entering the uh, the key and then we can get some get the, the actual heat inside filled up so what i always do the mains water first because then at least then i know that it's watertight and then i can start filling it up after that that's just a thing that i do habitually uh, but i think it's a good idea because at least then if the mains water's done then you know it's then you know it's watertight um yeah there we go then we can open up that start in start getting the water going in While the boiler's filling, then I can get that diverter motor in. As you can see, this is a CDI, so it's a bit more room around the sides and stuff like that to be able to get your hands in. Yeah, and then uh, once that's in, then we can uh, get that all sorted out. Then we can get the power back on. There you go, power, lead the pump. You see, I always crack, crack it open a little bit, 
shut it again, it just seems to vent it nicely. That's just the thing that I do. Don't necessarily need to. Okay, so I've cleared the pump, um, air vent's all done, made sure everything's all running well. So yeah. There we go. And then I, I was running the hot tap in the kitchen, running nicely at 60 degrees and uh, job done. There you go. Thanks for watching guys.